Hey y'all, so in today's video, I'm going to share five ways you can use ChatGPT for your grant writing process ethically. Let's talk about this one. Hey everybody, this is Tiffany with Boss on a Budget and I help new and small nonprofits get up and running. So if you need help with your nonprofit, I just don't understand why you have not subscribed to my channel yet because I drop videos every week and they're very helpful videos, action packed, action oriented videos on how to get started and how to navigate your startup journey. And today I wanted to talk about a really juicy topic in the tech world. Whether you realize it's juicy or not, you might not be paying any attention to it, but I wanted to talk about this because it really does impact the new and small nonprofit founder because you using this tool can change the game. Like it can make you more effective, more productive and all of that, but there are some downsides of using it. So I wanted to do a video on how to use this tool ethically. Now, you may be watching this and be like, Tiffany, I don't know what chat GPT is. Can you please break it down? Well, I did that very thing in this video that I'm linking above where I talked about chat GPT and how you can use it to write grants for your nonprofit. In a very simplistic way, chat GPT is an artificial intelligence tool that you can talk to, you can give it prompts and it can spit back information for you. And what it does is it scours data that have been collected on the internet for years and years and it has this super brain where it can process information and spit it back to you so you can ask it questions or ask it to do things for you or write things for you and it will do it and the cool thing about chat gpt is you can put a little sauce on it too like you can say well write in a conversational tone or write like this actor or write like this writer and it will do it for you based on the data that it's pulling from so as you can imagine for people who need to write and who don't like writing, how amazing a tool like this is. But there are some ethical concerns with people feeling like if you're going to write something, shouldn't you be writing it, not a machine? Right. And so there are some ethical concerns about why or how or should people be using ChatGPT. And of course, that relates to grant writing as well because there's a whole grant writing profession where people make money, right? And people are hired to write grants. Well, if there's a tool that's introduced that can write substantial parts of a grant, then that could possibly eliminate certain people's jobs and tasks. I don't necessarily believe that though, but that's the concern. That's that's the concern that you hear about ChatGPT. So what I wanna do in this video today is to help expand your thinking around ChatGPT. You may be thinking, well, I can just use it to write proposals, but I'm actually gonna give you five ways you can go beyond just writing a proposal and how you can use ChatGPT to really make you productive and change your life. And I want to make sure you watch to the end of this video because as always, I have my piece of advice that I want to leave you with if you are considering using this tool for your grant writing process. Number one, you can use it to develop a plan for your grant writing process. So I'm going to break this down. Now I'm really giving away the sauce, right? Because some people like sell things that can help you document your writing process, but you can literally go into chat GPT and say, hey, break down a process or a protocol that I should use for writing grants. And this is especially for people who want to write grants, who want to get in the rhythm of writing grants, but don't have a system down and don't know where to start, right? And they need it documented, right? Or they know pieces of it. Well, they know I got to gather documents here and I got to write this here, but I need help pulling that together in an organized way and writing it out as a plan. You can literally go into ChatGPT and ask it to give you a plan and it will spit it back out to you. How do I know? Because I tested it before I did this video and it gave you a very, it gave me a very detailed plan of how to plan out the grant writing process. Now I have done a blog on this. I had my own grant writing process when I used to write grants. So I had already done a blog and I had already written this out. But if you need help trying to like make sense of what it looks like, to write out your grant process, then you can go to ChatGPT and it will write it out for you. And it'll say, before you, you get a grant, do this. Uh, when you're looking and searching, get this information. When you're writing a grant, do this. After the grant, do this. It literally broke it down for me after giving it one prompt. So it can help you organize a process or help frame out a process that you need to complete a grant proposal. Now, this is what I'll say. like. It's important to use it as a tool to 
document how you want to do something or plan out how you want to do something, but you still have to do the thing, right? So if you need help actually drafting pieces of a proposal, I have a grant writing workbook that help you, that guide you through that process. It has templates for a budget and all of that that you can use for your first grant proposal. And I also have a grant submission toolbox where there are certain steps you need to take things you need to do to look over your grant proposal that happen after you write a proposal or while you're writing. And I have a bunch of tools available for you to do that. So if you're interested in those two products, make sure you check out the description box below because I included links to both of those. Number two, and this is an interesting one, you can use it to create a job description for help. Now, you probably didn't think I was going to say this. You probably thought I was just going to focus on the actual writing of the grant, but I really wanted to expand the thinking around using this tool so you can understand just how powerful it is. So say you want to hire a grant writer or you want to hire somebody to search grants, but you have no idea what to say. You have no idea how to structure the qualifications and the competencies and all of that. All you have to do is go to ChatGPT and say, hey, write out a job description for me for a part time grant writer. And this is especially for people who have some resources that they want to spend, but they're not sure what they should be asking for or they're not sure like what's a typical description of a person. You can use it to help you outline that and then put it on Indeed.com or put some feelers out there to people who may have access to grant writers. And even if you're not ready to hire, if you're trying to figure out for yourself, right, maybe you have a, a board and you all want to go into grant writing, but you're trying to figure out how to divide up the tasks so that it makes sense for different people to do. You can actually look at job descriptions for different pieces of the grant writing process, right? And use that to help organize your thinking around how you want to divvy up responsibilities when it comes to the grant writing process. There are so many different ways you can look at this. But creating a job description is a really cool way to get you thinking about how you can structure and hire and all of that. Now, I just want to give a note about hiring grant writers. I did cover this in another video that I'm linking above. Some of you guys may have questions about how to hire and can you pay commission? Can you wait till you get paid out of the grant? All those kinds of things. I'm going to summarize that video, but I also want to make sure you look at that video in depth so you understand why you should or shouldn't do certain things. But let me just say this, it is not ethical for a grant writer to be paid commission from a grant proposal. It goes against their the standards of that profession. And there are a lot of reasons why, and I broke them down in the video, but I'll just say this. Typically when you write a grant, you're writing a grant for program work and work to be done, not work that has already been done or to pay a debt. So you can't really use funds from something that's funded to go back and say, okay, now I'll pay you for what you did. And there's no guarantee that when somebody's writing for you, they're going to win and they could have a stellar proposal, but you still may not win. So there are a lot of considerations around hiring. So if you are going to use ChatGPT to develop a job description because you want to hire or you don't have the money to hire and you're thinking, well, I'll just, you know, pay them once we win a grant. I want you to rethink that because that's not a realistic way to go about hiring a grant writer. And any professional grant writer or any reputable grant writer will not say yes to that. Now, there are some grant writers who may do writing for you on a volunteer basis, and that's fine. But when payment is contingent on winning, that's when it becomes a problem. So I want you to watch this video so you can get more information about that. The third way you can use ChatGPT, and this is back to how to write a proposal, is asking it how to structure a piece of a proposal. So for example, one of the biggest aspects of a grant proposal is the need statement, sometimes called the problem statement, or sometimes you'll have the question, why do you need funding? And so that's when you need to really start breaking down the issues that you're addressing, why it's a problem, and you need to pull in data and statistics. Well, this section of the proposal really stumps people. And you may be prepared to write, but you may not know <laughs> what to say, right? Or what to how to structure it or where to even start. You can go into chat GPT and say, give me ideas for how to structure a problem statement for a grant proposal. And guess what? 
it is going to return an outline for you and tell you the different sections you should put in a need statement and what you should say. Again, how do I know this? Because I just did it before I recorded this video and it was very good, very detailed information. And even if you're not using ChatGPT to write for you, if you know you need to put in data and statistics, you can also ask it to return some data and statistics if you need them quickly to be inserted into a cramp proposal. Now, I don't think that this should replace you know, you reading and understanding your field and understanding your industry and what works and what doesn't work for the type of services that you provide, you should still be doing that kind of research, but you can use ChatGPT to, to complement that research process to help you pull some data or understand what's out there. It can pull information for you to help you understand some things and then that can guide you to learning and going deeper. So if you're looking at a blank page and you know that you need to write a piece of a proposal, but you don't know how to structure it, you can use ChatGPT to help guide you through that process to give you a basic structure for how to pull together or write a section of a proposal. And again, I'm staying away from actually use ChatGPT to write it for you. Like that's the obvious and easy answer for a lot of people. But for those who struggle with that and feel like that's not really ethical to have a machine write for them, you can at least have the tool tell you what to write or how to write. And that can guide you through the process. This fourth one is pretty cool. I like this one. So you can ask ChatGPT to explain something to you in a simpler way. And you can literally say, explain it to me like I'm a fifth grader. So what happens when you're looking at a grant application and you see a question that you don't understand? Um, and it could be around outcomes. It could be around a diversity statement. These are like questions I see in my Facebook group that people will get stumped by. So what if you encounter a question and you're like, I don't even know how to answer. Now, my first response to this would be, if you need help with a grant proposal from a specific funder, you need to ask that funder. You need to be able to feel comfortable reaching out to that funder for more information. But that's not always possible. Or let's be real, you may be doing this at the last minute and may not have time to get a response from the funder. I'm just trying to be real because a lot of times people write their proposals at last minute. So you can go to ChatGPT and you can say, explain this question to me like I'm a fifth grader and you can put the question in there and it will literally break it down for you. I did it y'all and it broke it down. It simplified the question. I really like this because sometimes you don't have the patience or the ability to process information in a way to understand it, right? Because people will sometimes say, well, just Google it. Well, you Googling it provides so much information that it's hard for you to decipher what you should be looking at or how to make the connections between what you're seeing in one article versus another. And the cool thing about ChatGPT is it does part of that processing for you. So you don't have to use your brain to process it. It uses its brain to process it and it will spit back information to you that can help you understand in a better way. So if you have like a question that you've encountered, and this isn't just for, you know, grant writing, it can be for anything that you encounter in your nonprofit journey or shoot in life, you can say, explain it to me like I'm a fifth grader and it will spit it back to you in a simplified way. It's so cool. Make sure you try it and then report back to this video and tell me what happened. And then finally, you can use ChatGPT to rewrite portions of a grant proposal. So if you're struggling with having like a machine write for you, but you've actually written something and you need help editing it or you need help like making it more concise or making it more compelling, you can actually ask ChatGPT to do that for you. Now, I'm not sure if there are limits like character limits or word limits. I did try this before I did this video and I asked ChatGPT to make a, a phrase more compelling and it actually spit it back out to me and it made it more compelling. <laughs> it needed a little bit of work, but it actually did it. And so I'm not sure if you put certain passages in there, if it's gonna like spit back a warning, if it's too many words or too many characters. So this one you need to test out, but if you needed to rewrite it for you or edit something for you, it can do it. So for those people who struggle with being a good writer, 
right? Or struggle with making something persuasive or making something really compelling to draw somebody's eye to what they're writing, you can use ChatGPT to help you along the process. So what I did was just say, can you make this statement more compelling? I put the statement in quotes and I just hit enter and it returned it back to me. Now, I just want to say this. This doesn't take the place of you actually writing. So you got to know what to write. You got to know what to put in there, right? And that includes personal stories or that includes anecdotes of the work that you've done or it includes data from the work your program has done. And that's the kind of stuff that ChatGPT can't produce for you, right? So if you need help trying to figure out how to write that or where to get that information from, I recorded a grants masterclass. It has so many resources from finding grants to writing a grant proposal to timelines for grant submission. All of those things is included in that grants masterclass and it has templates as well included in that masterclass. If you need help with your proposal, but you don't really understand the process, you need to purchase that masterclass. You will have it forever. You never lose access to it and you'll be able to refer to it to help guide you through the grant writing process. So I promise at the end of this video to share my piece of advice about using this tool. And this is what I'm going to say. For some of you guys who are struggling with ChatGPT, and you may be struggling in different ways. So you may be struggling saying, well, I don't use technology well. I'm not good with computers. It's another thing that I have to learn. I still haven't learned TikTok or social media. So why would I jump to something else? So you know, some of you may be struggling in that way. And some of you may be struggling, especially if you're like a grant writer or you're a writer, you may be struggling like, I don't feel comfortable with this. Like this is my profession. I believe there's something about an actual human writing and having that feel. And I just, I don't like the idea of this. <laughs> so you may be struggling in a couple different ways. This is what I will say to that. Unfortunately, we're moving in a direction where we can't get away from technology. And it's going to impact everything that we do, everything that we touch, how we do business, how we relate to each other. And if you don't in some way get comfortable with using it in whatever makes sense for you and your life or your profession, you are going to be left behind. And I hate saying this because I'm not like a tech groupie or a person like that, even though I enjoy learning about technology. But the reality is you will be left behind if you don't understand where we're going. So you may not like the tool, you may not want to use it or only want to use it in certain ways, but you absolutely need to learn it. You absolutely need to know the implications of using it, the good things and the bad things. So you're prepared. So you know how to react when something does happen, right? Because we can't avoid the use of artificial intelligence. This has been building for a long time. I think the general public has just now paid attention to it, but they've been working on AI like scientists and whoever else you call them have <laughs> been working on this kind of stuff for years and have been building to this moment where we get such powerful tools like ChatGPT. And honestly, if you're uncomfortable with using it, you got to understand it so you know how to advocate for the proper use of it. But if you don't understand anything about it, then you can't really advocate either way. You can't push back. You can't ask people to use it more responsibly or hold people accountable for how they're using it if you don't understand it and you don't understand how to use it. So my piece of advice is, even if you feel uncomfortable with this tool, learn it, use it, understand it, know it, right? And so you're in a better position to be able to respond and react to it. I hope that was helpful, y'all. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you need help with your nonprofit, you can visit me at bossinabudget.com. I have resources there to help you through your nonprofit startup journey. And you can also find me here on YouTube where I drop videos every single week to help you through your nonprofit journey. Thank you so much for supporting Boston A Budget and I will see you in the next video.